Welcome back everybody. For today's video, we are going to be covering a recent article on chess.com about a very important topic, which is cheating in chess. So let's jump right into the article. So we have this article from chess.com, which was published two days ago. Now that I'm dating this video a little bit, you have an idea when it's recorded. Player expelled from Romanian championship after alleged phone cheating. This is an article by Peter Doggers, February 23rd, 2023 at 1.50 p.m. All right, player expelled from Romanian championship after alleged phone cheating. A chess player was expelled from the Romanian chess championship after a phone was found in the restroom with a chess app showing his game's position after move 15. Although certain information on the phone strongly suggested it was his, the player denied this. The incident occurred during the fifth round of the Romanian championship, a nine-round Swiss tournament currently underway in Sebes, Romania. Paul Stelian Mihalic, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing this, of course, but apologies to all the Romanian people who are watching this video. A player with a FIDE rating of 1698 showed suspicious behavior that included frequent visits to the restroom. So first things first, this last bit has to make me laugh a little bit when we talk about going to the restroom, because one story that I have mentioned many times during my stream, not so much during specific videos on YouTube, that is, is that there was a tournament that I played in some years back called the London Chess Classic. I think it was maybe like 2017, 2016, not sure of the exact year, but at any rate, there were two players who were going to the restroom very frequently, and those two players were myself and Jan Pomniachi. And the story goes that basically one of the arbors was essentially assigned to watch us or, or sort of monitor us as we went to the restroom so we'd go and he'd be like waiting right outside and watch watch us as we would go back to the board so this is the first thing that kind of i had to throw in that story just because when i when i hear about frequent visits to the restroom there of course are other stories as well there is of course the toilet gate incident around the world championship match that was played between Vladimir Kramnik and Veselin Topolov, where Topolov was saying that Kramnik potentially was going to the restroom and cheating in the bathroom. So this is nothing new. All right. After one of those visits, an arbiter decided to check one of the toilet cubicles and found a smartphone. As the phone didn't have a PIN code, well, first of all, speaking of security, you got to have codes, you got to have like 2FA, you got to have all these different things to protect your devices. So a phone not having a pin code is kind of shocking in this modern world, but let's keep going. As the phone didn't have a pin code, he could open it and notice that it had three chess apps on it. One showed the position of Mihalic's game after 15 moves with the engine Stockfish 15 running. A Google account was active with Mihalic's name and email address. Okay. The tournament has a special anti-cheating officer, and before as well as during rounds, random checks are performed with players using a metal detector. It was decided to check Mahalish in a separate room, but no devices were found. Confronted with the information about the chess app and the Google account, the player denied the phone was his, but did sign the score sheet after the game was declared lost for him. Up to that point, he had scored 0.5 out of 4. The final game in question was played against a 1200 rated player now this is this is i guess his results we see that this player played against um four players now it looks like his result was not particularly good he lost his first first three rounds he lost to a master level player lost to an expert level player lost to a 1900 which of course is to be expected if you're 1698 you're playing against players who are two 300 points higher or in the case of the 2200 500 points higher you should probably lose these games in round number four, he drew with the white pieces against the 1500. So that is definitely a bit disappointing if you're 1700 to draw someone 200 points lower. Draws the fourth game. And then the fifth game against the 1200, he apparently went to the bathroom and he didn't think that he could beat this guy. So this is very odd because if you're a 1700 level player and you're playing a 1200 player, according to stats, if you, there's more than a 400 point rating difference, I believe that you are supposed to win approximately, I think it's 99.4% of the time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, now I could be slightly wrong on that, but I do, I, I do recall seeing that somewhere, maybe the percentage is off, but it's very, very close to that um, some years back. So anyway, he loses, he loses three games, draws to 1500, loses the three players who are higher, draw, and then he plays a 1200 and loses this game. Now, again, very shocking for sure to see, because obviously what, how is that going to help him if he, if he was cheating, for example, how does that help him? He obviously has no chance that I, I'm going to assume making making prize money here after three losses and a draw. So even if he wins out, very unlikely um, that any good can come from that. So this is a little bit bizarre, uh, to put it mildly. So how does the story keep going? Chief Arbiter Dinu Ioan Nikula and Tournament Director George Nikula then decided to expel Mihalic from the tournament. A report has been sent to the FIDE Ethics and Disciplinary Commission, which may ban the player for a certain period from playing FIDE-rated events. All right. 
Romanian Chess Federation tweet, of course, player eliminated from the national chess championships as he was using a smartphone, smartphone, not smartphone, smartphone in the restroom to help him cheat. The chief arbiter, Dino Ian Nicola and the TD George Nicola, decided to eliminate Paul Steli and Mihalic from the competition. Decision was not challenged. So here is a specific picture. I will pull this up very briefly. And this looks like pretty damning evidence as, as we look at this, as we look at this tweet. I mean, you, you just you, you just look at this picture. Uh, here's a score sheet. That's fine. But then, yeah, you look at this position on the phone. This is with the Chessify app, which actually, I have to be honest, I've never, I've actually never even heard of Chessify. I've heard of Chess24, Chess.com, and uh, there's also Follow Chess, which is what I've heard. Of. I've never heard of Chessify, so I guess it's a new app. Um, but anyway, you see Stockfish 15 is running here. This, I assume, I didn't look at the score sheet closely, but I'm going to assume, yeah, Queen Queen D5. This is, yeah, of course, this is the, wait, this is the position after Queen D5. Wait, 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 let me go forward. Not to not to be um not to be be the detective here, but this is after Black's move. White has played Rook F E one, so this is probably like move fourteen or move fifteen. Rook F E one B five C three Bishop B seven ninety five Rook A D eight Rook F E one. This position on move sixteen Rook F E eight D four takes C Rook F E eight. It looks like that's D four C D four C D four E five F E. Okay, position looks a little bit, little bit off, but it's, it is, it is quite close. Um, and maybe, maybe it's just a different, different specific position here. Um, but anyway, yeah. So we, we have this, which looks like pretty damning evidence, to put it mildly. Just, I mean, you see somebody's phone with the exact position from the game. Kind of hard to dispute that. So, um, so here's the actual tweet from the Romanian Chess Federation, and then we keep going. We have the incident in Romania is very similar to earlier cheating scandals in chess. In 2015, an arbiter of the Dubai Open found an iPod hidden behind the cistern. I actually, my English has gotten worse over here, so I don't know what cistern means. Uh, I'm not going to Google it right now, but I assume it's like hidden somewhere, um, somewhere in the bathroom and covered with toilet paper during one of the rounds. Or maybe it's just this thing that holds the toilet paper. The Georgian Grandmaster, Geaz uh, Nigalidze, denied he owned the device, even though it was locked into a social network site under Nigalidze's account, and that his game was being analyzed in one of the chess applications. Nigalidze was, ex was expelled from the tournament and eventually banned from competitive play for three years, and his Grandmaster title was revoked. Another case was at the 2018 European Youth Chess Championship, where a participant in the under-14 section admitted to cheating after the arbiter found the phone in the found the phone in the men's restroom. All right. The now 61-year-old Latvian Czech, Czech grandmaster Igor Zrauzis got caught cheating in July 2019 at a tournament in Strasbourg, France, as he used a phone in the restroom. So all these, all these situations seem to be pretty similar. It seems to be that there was a phone in the bathroom or there was a phone or device that, whether well, there was a bathroom or on them, something of that nature. A photo surfaced and subsequently went viral on the internet and mainstream media. This, of course, was related to Rouse's. We was sitting on the toilet looking at his phone. Um, later that year, FIDE banned him for six years and stripped him of the GM title. While the scandal involving GM Magnus Carlsen and GM Hans Niemann remains unresolved, many chess terms are stepping up their anti-cheating measures. At the Tadasil chess tournament last month, Vikon Zay, at the last tournament, tournament last month, Bike on Say, this involved transmitting the moves to the internet with a 15 minute delay and checking the players with metal detectors. At the WR Chess Masters, which is currently underway in Dusseldorf, Germany, there is also a 15 minute delay and players are checked with a metal detector, but also a magnet is pointed at the ears to check for tiny hidden devices. So again, another another article involving cheating. Obviously, this is very, very bad for the game of chess. I will also add something completely separate from this article, which I think needs to be said, which is that I have heard from parents of promising junior players in the United States about similar situations where players are potentially cheating against them. And when I hear these stories combined in conjunction with all these other things that are going on right now, you see this article, there was another article we covered, I think maybe it was a couple of months back, I think it was about a Dutch or Bel Belgian, I think it was a player from, uh, from Dutch, uh, from the Netherlands or from Belgium that we covered. This is a very, very si serious issue. I cannot state that enough. Um, and I do hope that the powers that be will take these things very seriously, because if we don't, I do think there is a future where professional and competitive chess is simply not going to exist if we try to brush this under the rug and not deal with it. So I do think the authorities in charge, they will probably be looking at all this stuff. You assume that they're taking it seriously, but having heard some of the things that I've heard in recent times, completely separate of everything else, uh, it does make me very disturbed and very depressed to hear about it. Also to hear about it here in the United States is not a good thing either. Um, 
not not that it wouldn't be good if it was somewhere else but just to hear about that um you know a place where i grew up and i played chess as, as a kid it really is it really is very very scary so again i think we'll see what happens going forward uh but yet another case where where a player has cheated um and maybe maybe they, they will face a ban now of course in this case it is obviously different as well because this player for example their rating is 1698 so if your rating is 1698 and you were to say get banned from chess for cheating for a couple of years as an example they don't have any sort of real future future or their the prospects of making a living out of chess are very very low it's very difficult to uh yeah i mean you have almost no chance of making prize money as a player coaching is very unlikely um at least in romania in some place in the us is 1700 you can't actually do very well as a coach but for the most part the the progression or the career that could exist in chess it's just not there for someone at this rating level so again probably for this player they i don't think tilted what happened who knows but it's, it, it it doesn't necessarily like change their life in any way shape or form so on that note you guys I hope you've enjoyed this article uh, I try not to cover some of these things for the most part but it, I do think that when it comes to this it is a very very important topic and having heard some of the things that I heard about potential cheating in the U.S. recently I am I'm actually kind of a little bit depressed and disappointed and um I just hope that this gets th that this issue is taken very seriously as opposed to being treated as though it's something that just isn't really relevant or isn't really happening in any kind of meaningful way all right so anyway you guys if you have not hit that subscribe button below make sure to hit it now and i will be back with some more great content in the very near future hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys soon have a good one bye